Good morning ladies and gentlemen. It's fantastic to have you all on board today. Today we are going to be sharing with you some pain relief tips. Things that you can do easily at home to relieve your physical and emotional pain. But before we get started, I'd like to share with you a little bit about us, what we're about here at Next Gen Wellness. So, we are in the pain and stress industry. I work with people that suffer pain as a result of stress, disease and injuries. We use a holistic approach that incorporates infrared technology, education, coaching and a whole range of modalities to enable people to have their pain reduced, their movement increased and to develop a healthy, relaxed mindset. I guide people to enable them to get free of their distress and to reduce their restrictions. So let's get on with it, shall we? What can you do to reduce your physical and emotional pain? Tip number one, breathe. If you don't breathe, you die. If you don't breathe properly, you end up in pain. Your body and your mind, your brain are starved of oxygen. And our body reacts in ways to help us get our needs met. I regularly find women coming through with terrible pain or stiffness in this area here. Their bra strap. And it's directly related to not breathing well. So what they tend to do when there's a little bit of stress going on or chronic pain, physical pain, whatever, they tend to hold their breath. So I want you all to hold your breath now and just feel that tightness in the middle of the area of your back around your bra strap. People who are breath holders, those muscles around that area tense up, okay? They're trying to send a message to breathe. The problem with that is they're not getting relief. So as a result, they don't get the air. So if you find you suffer discomfort in that area, you need to be very aware of your breathing. You may find yourself grunting sometimes or taking like a really deep breath. That's an indicator that you're not breathing properly. So start becoming aware of that. If you find yourself grunting or gasping, best thing you can do is stop and take four very slow, deep breaths through the nose, down to the belly, hold, and just release slowly as you can through your mouth. Allow that oxygen to really fill your lungs and oxygenate your blood and give your brain and body what it needs. It would be a great idea if you make a habit of this. So sometimes I tell my clients who have this issue to set an alarm on their phone. So say every hour on the hour, they get the message, breathe, and they stop whatever they're doing and they take four long, deep, beautiful breaths. Tip number two is stretch. How many of us spend time stretching? Stretching is not just something you do before and after exercise. It's something we need to do throughout the day. Particularly in the morning, we stretch our bodies up. It helps our lymphatic drainage. It helps our muscle tone. It helps our blood, our circulation. It's so important to our body. And stretching reassures the nervous system we're okay. So if we're okay, if our inner self is confident that we can move to protect ourselves, it can actually reduce the stress, reduce the worry. That would be helpful, wouldn't it? So stretching doesn't have to be anything important. You just move your limbs till you feel the stretch, you hold it for 15, 20 seconds so it's effective, and you just work on all the muscles. It doesn't have to be perfect. 
However, if you do have issues with mobility, I strongly recommend you go and see a good physio or movement specialist and they will help you to find and um, move correctly so that you can get the best out of your stretch. So stretching, first thing in the morning, make a part of your routine. As soon as you get out of bed, stretch. Um, it's a good idea to move through the day. So many of us end up stuck in chairs and the offices and we could go hours and hours without moving. So again, use your phone, use it as a tool. That alarm goes off, breathe, four breaths, get up, move, stretch your body, walk around, okay? Reassure, get things moving. If you don't move it, you lose it. Stretching is essential for stress and pain relief. Tip number three, rest. People who have suffered chronic pain, particularly those who have conditions like fibromyalgia, is so prevalent among our women now in the Western world. The reason we have it is because we tend uh, to be workaholics or people who have chronic pain often tend to push through the boundary all the time. It starts to hurt. Their mind gets a message, hey, you know, there's an issue here, and they totally ignore it, push through it, end up with physical injuries or emotional burnout, physical burnout. So resting is really important. And it's really sitting on the tele on the lounge watching television, Facebook flicking, social media on your phone, that's not resting, guys. Your brain is still getting worked. Your brain needs to be rested. And please, mums, dads, be aware, if you're letting your kids spend hours on end on devices, playstations, whatever, their minds are not resting. They end up absolutely cognitively exhausted. Their brains are so, so tired that by the time they go to school, they can't learn, there's nothing left in there. And you need to show that, model that, super important, okay? So rest, and resting means complete stop. Get off your devices, meditate, be mindful. Just look around the room, look, preferably go outside. I want you to do things like count five things you can see. Note the colours. Note the texture and the feeling of your surroundings. Start identifying all the different sounds you can hear. All good strategies to enable you to rest and soak up relaxation. So many people don't actually know how to stop. They've not been taught. Mums and dads, you need to model this. You need to teach your kids how to rest properly. Not just sleep time. This is stopping altogether. Being mindful. Allowing your body to flick through the memory bank of positive memories. The negative stuff, just keep blasting on that stuff by. It's not helpful for stress. It's not helpful for pain. Spend time with people you care about and have conversation that's nurturing. Get out of the habit of bitching all the time. Get out of the habit of sucking all the time. Because if you focus on the pain, whether it's stress, whether it's physical, your body gets a message that that's what you want. You get what you focus on, guys. So conversation, tip number four, conversation. Be very careful what you think, what you say, what you spend most of your time reflecting and forecasting, you get what you think. So if you wanna feel better, start thinking feel better thoughts, soothing your system, going through what is good in life, what is working in your body. Yeah, you might have extreme debilitating pain in your knees or your shoulder or anywhere else in your body, but there will be parts of your body that are working. There will be parts of your body that are pain free. Acknowledge and celebrate that guys, otherwise you're just scaring the living shit out of your inner child. And its job 
is to keep you safe. Its job is to give you physical pain in order to create action. And if you don't listen to the knock, when you kind of get that message, oh, I should probably slow down. Oh, I suppose I should rest because I'm not feeling great. If you ignore that and you push through that all the time, if you don't think, do the things you need to do for self-care, that little knock, hello, turns into a bigger knock. Oi, look after me. You might damage me. If you ignore that, that's that little bit of pain, that stiffness you get. In the end, you end up potentially with severe pain. Listen, I'm in trouble here. I need action. You want that? Some of us end up in that level of pain no matter how much medication they take because they're not listening. They're not breathing well, which is understandable when you're in pain and stressed. They're not stretching. So they're not reassuring their nervous system they can move and that they can get themselves to safety. They're not resting to recharge and give their mind and emotional well-being, their spirit and their bo physical body the break it needs to, to rejuvenate. Uh, thinking about the mind, self-soothing, the conversation you're having with yourself. The conversation you are having with other people okay soothe self watch what you focus on because that's what you're going to get another thing number five that you can do in order to help relieve your chronic stress and pain is to come in and experience infrared therapy here at next gen wellness we have got a beautiful cocoon and sauna Come on in, relax, lay down or sit in our sauna, lay in our cocoon and enjoy the warm air circling your body and that beautiful healing infrared light. We've got full spectrum plus red. Our equipment is state of the art. So there's 10 different things happening that promote healing. Putting your body into deep rest mode and rejuvenation. Sometimes you've just got to book an appointment to enable you to stop and rest and recharge. So he, we specialise that here. You can just come in and spend 40 minutes of straight out relaxation. If probably 99% of people come through, come out feeling intense, immense relief. How would that be? Just to have a little bit of relief. Nevlona, huge chunk of relief. I had a lady come in um, last week and she has been experiencing seizures and multiple seizures every day for a long, long time. And she came in, she gave the infrared a go. And we all know infrared's awesome for the brain. And um, just with one treatment, She's been seizure free for a whole week and moving so much better. Being able to bend down and pick stuff off the floor, which she couldn't do before. Wow, how cool is that? Do you want some of that? Do you want some of that mind clarity so the brain can settle? Do you want to be able to move smoother? Imagine how awesome it is when you've had six or 12 sessions.